when the Egyptian authorities told a three-member Mercy Relief Team from Singapore that they could not enter the Palestinian refugee camps in the northern city of El Orish, a split-second decision was made to head towards Cairo on March 15. In the Egyptian capital, the team, comprising Mercy Relief Chairman Satwan Singh, board member Cheryl Fomi Hassaini and Executive Director Muhammad Ashikdat, got to work preparing 20. 000 food packages to distribute to 800 families in Gosa. Prepared in a warehouse in Ismailia, about 244 kilometers from the Rafa border, the packages will go out in the next seven days and are expected to last the recipients for about a week. The packages, which include more than 30 basic food items like salt, sugar, cooking oil, and dates will be distributed to refugees in Gaza through partner agencies in Cairo. Additionally, the team also provided hygiene kits, such as wet wipes and sanitary towels. The Egyptian port city of El Orish is an area set aside as part of efforts to address the needs of refugees, Mr. Ashik said. He and his two teammates were on a three-day trip to Egypt until March 17 to provide help and deliver essentials to the affected communities. They landed in Ismailia after a 16-hour flight from Singapore and helped organize an iftar or a breakfast meal where the food was catered and paid for by Mercy Relief. This is Mr Singh's second trip to the region since the October 7 attack by militant group Hamas in Israel. He visited Egypt in January for the first tranche of relief aid, and both he and Mr. Fahmy had visited Gaza during the 2014 war. For the first tranche of aid to Gaza in January, Mercy Relief prepared and delivered food supplies, hygiene kits, ingredients for hot meals, clothing and other non-food items for around 22,000 people. Mr. Singh, 60, said the situation now seems worse than it was in January. He said, when I was handing out the food packages, the people were so grateful that they were thanking us multiple times. It makes you realize the impact your actions have, no matter how little. I can't put that feeling into words. Mr. Fomi, 50, said the refugees are caught in a few different situations. Some were in Egypt for medical treatment before the October 7 attack, and now find themselves unable to go back because their homes have been destroyed. He said, for one family, a mother had just given birth shortly before the attacks. They left Gaza a few days later with their newborn because they had no other choice and wanted to seek safety and shelter for themselves. Despite the uncertainty and exposure to danger, refugees have retained a strong sense of faith and hope, Mr Singh said. After speaking to many of them, it's devastating to see the despair on their faces, especially the children. They are extremely sad that this is happening, and their only wish during this holy month of Ramadan is for a ceasefire, he added. Mr Ashik, 37, who was visiting the region for the first time, said the most memorable part of the trip was interacting with the children. Speaking to the kids, it was nice to experience their childlike wonder. They want to become doctors and engineers, and their hope does not waver. They see the world with an open mind and heart and don't hold any hatred towards the world, he said. Mercy Relief which had been involved in aid missions to Pakistan in September 2022 to help flood victims, and deployed a team to Typhoon Heat Japan in October 2019, decided to keep the Gaza team small. Mr Singh said, We have to ensure each other's safety at all times, and with a smaller group. It is more manageable. We also have to work with ground partners, and react quickly and make decisions if there's an issue. He added that Mercy Relief hopes that Singaporeans will continue to help raise funds for Gaza victims.
which could make up a third tranche of aid. He said, we need funding of at least $100,000 for such trips, so we hope that our fellow Singaporeans are able to help out as we have been instilled with values. When we were growing up, to help one another in need.